But then all these years later, I look at myself and I'm like, man, I got a lot of my dad's qualities. <laughs> I got a lot of my mom's qualities. And I'm thinking about this. Aaron Rodgers would never want to be compared to Favre. Favre, southern guy, rigid, threw all those picks. I'm a lot smarter than Brett Favre. And Favre never thought Aaron Rodgers was his equal. Guy went to junior college, California guy, thinks he's better than everybody. They're becoming one another. Think about this. Let's go to Favre's first 10 years in the league as a Packer, and let's go to Aaron's first 10 years as a Packer. Both have a Super Bowl, multiple MVPs, 9 out of 10 winning seasons, and 6 Pro Bowls. Both have iconic arms, commercials beloved by the fawning media. First 10 years, same guy. Maybe one's from the South, one's from the West, same guy. But remember how Brett Favre's career ended. And couldn't I make an argument? This is sort of how Aaron's will end. How did Favre's last five seasons go? Barely a 500 road quarterback. Three teams, multiple Pro Bowls, couple division titles, never got back to a Super Bowl. And oh, by the way, kind of flaky. Remember, Favre, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to retire. I'm going to retire. I'm not going to retire. Kind of held the team hostage. And oh, by the way, there were a couple of quarterbacks emerging, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, who looked better. When I look at, when I look at Aaron Rodgers down the stretch, I think he's going to make Pro Bowls. I think he's going to win a couple division titles. I'm not sure he's going to get back to the Super Bowl. And he's becoming a little like Favre, whereas your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault, coach out, Ty Montgomery out, defense problem. Aaron Rodgers' first 10 years are identical to Favre's. Will his last seven be? Oh, great to have you back, Eric Dickerson. Chris Broussard, Derek Johnson, former chief and Raider, a great linebacker. Steven Jackson, blazing five top. The I can't, this is the best show of the week. So Andy Reid last night is getting blown up on social media, which is a funhouse mirror. Uh, whatever the Twitter says, the opposite is true, of course. And uh, they're like, uh, Andy Reid's a bum. They lost the game. They blew a 14-point lead. Did you watch the Dolphins-Patriots on Sunday? Did you watch how bad the Patriots were situationally? You've seen Mike Tomlin make gaffes, Pete Carroll in Super Bowls. They can't coach either. Folks, did, it was ironic last night. It was very unique. We had the one coach in the NFL with an incredible resume that gets the most heat because he can't win the big one against the one quarterback in the league that's a Hall of Famer. He will be. He should be with a great resume, but many people will deny him that because he can't win the big one. It was a classic matchup of Andy Reid, to me, a Hall of Fame coach, and Philip Rivers, a Hall of Fame player. Let me ask you something. Andy Reid, a Super Bowl appearance, five NFC Championship appearances, resurrected Kansas City, top NFL play designer, and by the way, his disciples, Doug Peterson, won a Super Bowl, and Matt Nagy will win Coach of the Year. You don't think he can coach. Are you better at your job than him? You don't think he can coach. You're dumb and I can't help you. Did you watch Philip Rivers play last night? You don't think he's great? Pre-snap, fourth down, two-point conversion, under pressure, got helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit late in the game, would knock most of us into Mars. He got up, argued with a ref, came back and played his best football. And you don't think, he can, you don't think he's great. Folks, Andy Reid's a better coach than Brian Billick and Mike Ditka and Barry Switzer and Gary Kubiak and John Gruden and Doug Peterson. And they all have Super Bowls. And Phillip Rivers is better than Eli Manning and Nick Foles and Brad Johnson and even our friend Trent Dilfer would admit he is. And they have Super Bowls. You do get, you can't do it on an island in life. You can be the best card salesman in the world but if you have crappy cars i'm an average car salesman i'll beat you if i'm selling the bmw you get how the game works right like in hollywood they celebrate nominations like nobody needed leonardo dicaprio to win an oscar to go god that guy's good in fact revenant's not even my favorite leonardo dicaprio movie i like wolf of wall street they got a lot of them i like but in sports, if you don't win the game, you're no good. If Andy Reid and Philip Rivers were attorneys, were doctors, were teachers, were actors, were landscapers, were anything else, you'd be like, God, they're great employees. They win 70% they win of their cases. 
in the courtroom. Well, they, they didn't win the OJ trial, so they're no good. That's not really how we look at law and education and everything. But sports is different. I get it. But this argument that Andy Reid and Phillip Rivers aren't great, they're, fant- they're not even great. They're fantastic. But because of circumstances, it just so happens that, you know, Andy Reid, when he had the Eagles, there were a lot better quarterbacks he was facing, like Brett Favre. And it should be noted that in the AFC, Tom Brady is still there, and Big Ben and Andrew Luck, and now we got Deshaun Watson's really good, and Phillip Rivers and a bunch of great coaches, and this is called life. Just because you're the second-best realtor in Los Angeles doesn't mean you're not a world-class realtor. Just because you're the third biggest real estate developer in Dallas doesn't mean you're not a world-class real estate developer. We were watching two all-time greats last night, whether people realize it or not. Andy Reid and Philip Rivers. Here's Joy Taylor with the news. No. 